Hi, I'm Felix Mars and I'm back with another tutorial and this time I'm going to be using Unity 5. So a new feature of Unity 5 is the Global Illumination Lighting Model. You can get to it through this lighting tab which is in Windows Lighting and at the moment we've got it set to auto but I'm just going to turn it off briefly so I can discuss a few things. So normally in games when you've got a real time light you get one lighting bounce and then it stops so if it hits a mesh it will produce some light from the mesh but it will only light say a small section in front of the object and then stop now this isn't how lighting works in the real world and if you've got baked lighting or if you're rendering film, say a CG film, then you will have global illumination calculations. But this is in real time and it kind of does it in a more unapproximated way than fully rendering it but it does work quite well and this scene here is sponsor which is used quite a lot for global illumination and the scene that I have is from another engine the cry engine from crytech and the files are just on their website in the downloads area if you go to the downloads area you will see the sponsor model and there are the files there's an obj a max file and textures and that's all I've done is import them and I have actually like kind of grouped them a bit better than they were just for my own knowledge of where things are in the scene and what they are because they're all called like sponsor 001, sponsor 002, you get the idea. So it's a bit confusing to find out what they actually really are in terms of the meshes in the scene. So there's not a lot we need to do actually. Um, if you just turn down the ambient intensity, you can already see that this without the ambient light is kind of really dark and muddy. It doesn't look very good. So we're going to fix that. We're going to leave the ambient intensity off and we're not going to change any of these settings for the moment but what we've got to do now is make sure that auto is selected so it does it in the background you can disable it and maybe sometimes you will actually want to disable it try and debug stuff but this is fine for now so what we're going to do is mark all these are static as I said I've kind of grouped them all differently so I'll quickly do that and actually let's just group that select and hit static instead of doing that and just yes change your children to be static so now it's starting the process and this will take a bit of time so I'm just gonna quickly cut to when it's complete my machine is a little bit slow well the one I'm using here is a little bit so slow it's not my main machine so I'll just cut to when it's actually completed the process so I've done that now but the lighting still looks kind of a bit funny. Um, part of this, as I said, is down to the materials. So one thing you can do to fix that is go into Game Object, Light, and there's a Light Probe Group and a Reflection Probe. But we actually want the Reflection Probe for now. Uh, that will fix quite a lot of this. If I go zero, 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 Get that in the center still looks really weird so lift it up a bit I'm going to put it on about 5 actually and change the size to encompass the scene and for now I'm just going to whack 40 on all these I can eat in this a little bit later on now it looks a little bit better but now it kind of looks a bit dark well this isn't a problem to be honest it probably should look this dark because there's only like a little thin roof where light's actually able to get in so in best game fashion we're gonna tweak it to actually look 
a little bit better brighten the room up a bit and kind of fix some of these problems but m most of the uh, actual calculation has worked correctly um, so if we drag this reflection intensity down because I know there's some issue I saw earlier with this where these line heads were too bright and it was due to that so what other settings do we need to change we can boost the intensity of the indirect and that kind of looks a bit better now five to me seems a bit high what I'd rather do is put this maybe at two and then for the actual light itself Click out of this for a second, find directional light. There's intensity and bounce intensity, and again, two is a bit too bright. I'd say something like 1.4, maybe about something on that for now. You see, it looks a lot better now, kind of where we want the lighting to be. And I've just selected the soft shadows for the shadows for the way. You can tweak around with that yourself. Now, another thing, as I said, you might want some dynamic objects, some of the things to be dynamic in your scene, like these little hanging baskets here. So earlier I had these set to static but now I'm going to go through and deselect some stuff. This is part of the reason I grouped them. So I could just simply uncheck that. And now these are dynamic objects. And with dynamic objects, you ideally get some probe lighting anyway. But if you need to add extra probes, you go back into this game objects that I was in earlier, lights, and add light probe group. And you should now have some probes in the scene. That's in the wrong place. It's miles away. Let's get it in the center of the scene for now. And this will add probe lighting to all the objects around here so that's that done I'm just going to turn this off again because I want to work on some stuff now so one improvement that you can make with performance if we look at the UV charts these looking okay there's some weirdness going on here so we can improve those and also the systems I'm not really happy with these systems because these flags here are not in the same system as this wall piece and they really should be um, it's, it's very cluttered there's so many systems in here that you don't really need and it'll take longer to calculate and in general it's a bit messy it doesn't seem quite right to me so what I'm going to do is regroup some of these and you can do that quite simply and I've already created some of these if you go back into this lighting tab and go into object you will notice that there are these advanced parameters and I said I've created some already but if I was to click down on here create a new one and say I wanted it in a particular system I can change that to minus one which I assume is just like automatic to let's go with um, there's a bunch of other options on here I'm not going to dig too deeply into these 
some of them can be useful. I'm going to turn up edge stitching. I don't really care about that. But you can call it kind of tweak individual parameters in here, which is kind of useful. You might want to button this down or change these quality settings. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'll just rename this to say Felix one, just for example. Helps if the F key actually works. One. God, no. I think this is more my machine struggling here. So yeah, it's still not done, it, has it? There we go. Finally, if I now select this mesh, so all these flags or banners, whatever you want to call them, and get the last one. So I've got more there. Go back into this lighting tab, and I'm just gonna make sure that all got my Felix01 parameters. Another thing you can do is tweak around with the quality again. So by adjusting some of these values, you can change the overall quality. But anyway, what I'm going to just do quickly is show you what happens when we now re build this. Now you can see that the charts of for the systems have merged together. It's just one system now, which makes things a bit cleaner. Oh, and yeah, I was going to tell you how to get rid of this. Now this is because the auto UV detection is sometimes incorrect. But if you've got decent UVs already and you don't want to use the the ones that it provides, you can do that. And in fact, it, that still looks a bit rubbish to me. The UVs look kind of like they've curved with the object. So I'm going to try to tweak the auto UV value by whacking, whacking one in there. That's kind of produced the right result this time. So I'll just apply that to the other ones. And yeah, as I was saying, I would look at what you've got and decide if your parameters are good enough or they need changing. But there are fiddly charts on this roof and I don't really like that. So one option is to kind of select one of the other parameters that I made and apply it. Um, let's just do that now. I've got this. Well, you could use the default low resolution actually. And when you rebuild that, you should see that those should be bigger. That's not actually happening there. She's one of mine. There we go. So they're less wasteful now. Okay, so I've nearly finished setting this up now. As you can see, I've kind of lowered the density of the charts up here on the back. That's probably already like that. And in this top bit here where the player's never going to get to, so near the roof, again, you're never going to be able to get up here, so this is quite blocky as you can see. I think I've improved some of it down on these walls here because again, Probably not going to get up here. I could probably even lower this even less, to be honest. Um, too even less, sorry. And if we look at the systems, I've tried to group them better. So there's not like multi colours everywhere. There's a couple of colours and they kind of make a bit more sense now. That'll help your performance a bit. And as you can see here, on that back wall, as I said. So let's look at the final scene. And it is a bit dark at the moment, but there's a little surprise coming. 
so one of the other things I've done is to, or going to do, should I say, I've tried it out previously, so just add some subtle fog. That's a, actually a bit too strong there. So let's reduce that down a bit. That's a bit better and a little bit of fog just to lift the scene. Obviously these aren't lighting related, they're just improvements to the lighting quality I guess and the visual quality of your scene. I've dropped in a first person controller and on the camera I'm just going to add or I've added already depth of field so I turn that script on and screen say space ambient occlusion which will make all the corners darker and it will help lift out the scene a bit. There are other things you can do to sort of tweak around and make the scene look nice. The final thing I've done and it's good because it proves that the uh, dynamic light is working and you know, correctly lighting the scene is I've added one of the scripts that's by default in Unity now which is the auto move and rotate script uh, to the light and you see it's not static it's dynamic and I've just set the rotate degrees per second to 2 and 2 and put it on world space for now so when I press play actually drop into the game I actually see that you're getting the dirty light coming in changing the lighting within the scene changing the brightness of the scene bouncing around on the walls and correctly lighting your scene and I'll just have a little wander around to show you the scene now and it's looking really nice actually it's going darker you can see it's getting darker all around the scene And there you go. Well, I hope you uh, enjoy this little demo and have fun playing with the global illumination in Unity 5. See you next time.